What's going on guys? It's your boy Beats Bayash, back at it again with another banger of a video. And at the time of this recording, the first ever One Piece card game world championship has just concluded with the winner Sakazuki taking the whole tournament. And along with the conclusion of this tournament, we have received news of a upcoming ban list for the One Piece card game. And to no one's surprise, Sakazuki is finally getting hit as it justly deserves. Deserves. So with this news, I'm super excited just because anytime there is some sort of ban list for us in the US, it kind of mitigates a little bit of that information loop where the Japanese players are just figuring everything out before we even get to receive the cards and anything that is able to change that aspect to increase a higher level of emphasis on getting a deck building advantage in the US version of the card game, I'm going to be super excited for that because I feel like that's when I strive the most versus people just copying deck lists from a format that's already happened three months in advance. And another good thing is that Bandai has stated they are in the works of trying to catch up the USA to the Japanese metagame in this next coming year or so. And that's just really nice to see. It just shows how much the game is progressing to a point where they actually care about the competitive admiration of their player base. I'm really excited to see it. So I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts on this ban list and what it changes for the game going into OPO6. And without further ado, let's get into the goo. So starting off, we're going to talk about the one non-Sakazuki card here, which is the card we have yet to receive, Reject, a four-cost yellow event with the Sky Island keyword, and the effect is KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less, or if your opponent has one life, you can deal one damage to them, then add one card from the top of your life to your hand. Now this second effect is what's really relevant about this card and the whole reason why this card is getting banned. Um, I'm super excited for this card to be banned because generally speaking, it's just objectively toxic. It allows you to bypass a core aspect of the game, being that it doesn't matter how many cards your opponent has in their hand, there's just going to be a lot of situations where you can automatically kill them, disregarding, you know, the core mechanics of countering in the game. And at the same time, this card has the Sky Island keyword, which means that it's searchable off of your Shura. And for the same reason that this is a Sky Island card, it feels very oppressive to be used in an Enel deck just because you get certain advantages associated with manipulating your own life, being that you can set up your 200 million bolts, as well as your leader ability to force your opponent to have to trigger your leader ability on the following turn, and also just your nine cost Yamato. There's quite a few things you can do with that there, but generally speaking, situationally in the yellow and L deck, since there are so many advantages to manipulating your own life, it's almost like this card does not have a cost under those circumstances that is what's putting this card really over the edge in my mind and i'm very happy that we are not going to have to deal with this any way we can take away advantages of those dirty yellow players i am all for Mama, Mama. <laughs> now moving on to the two other cards being placed on the ban list that we already have received we have sakazuki this was very, very foreseen. I mean, this card really just does too much. It's almost like you're playing a different game, and I'm honestly excited to see that this is no longer in the game. A lot of people just felt like they were so much better than other people by playing this leader, and the reality is it had a little bit of skill, but ultimately, it's not that hard to figure out. This card just gives you way too much value without having to rest any dawn or attach any dawn to it, and that by no means is fair in any way. I mean, already the ability to cycle every single turn is just insane. If it didn't have the second effect, it would still be an amazing leader, and I think that ability on its, on its own is just so, so unfair when we're at a point in the game where most decks are not at a high level of consistency compared to other top TCGs, and you gotta wonder, at a certain point, how many times does it take 
for you to discard a card and draw a card with this leader ability for the ability to actually become you're just drawing a card and not losing any advantage. You know, you could almost say that once you do it two or three times that you're essentially just drawing a card with no drawback because of the vast recursion of cards such as your Rebecca or your Moncherry, just being able to thrive on having targets in the graveyard in order to generate free plus ones. You know, at a certain point, if you're discarding a card that had no effect on the game or no effect in this matchup and you're drawing a new card, you know, it's almost like there's no downsides in that regard as well. Combined with the second part of this ability where you're essentially just increasing the ceiling of your most premium removal effects in the deck, being the Rob Lucci, being the Blue Boar Selino, even being the Hound Blaze. These cards in general are some of the highest level of efficiency in terms of premium removal in the entire game, even without triggering that leader ability to increase their ceiling. And that just goes to show how unfair and degenerate this ability really is. You know, in my opinion, Rob Lucci Forecast is still the best piece of removal in the entire game, being able to remove two characters characters from the board while also getting a sizable body that does not suffer in a decrease of stats such as other cards that do get a drawback for having an extremely relevant effect and combined with this leader ability it was just way too overpowered and I'm super excited to see this gone. I think the cherry on top of this year is that this leader is in one of the most synergistic two color pairs that we have ever seen in the game. You know being that there are blue navy cards and black navy cards that all are some of the best cards in each of those colors you know it just adds so many layers to what your game plan is and how effectively and how often you're able to consistently accomplish your game plan or your win condition it's just completely unfair compared to all these other leaders now if it was up to me I don't necessarily want to see this card banned. I would have rather had them take an approach where they just increase the overall power level of all of the decks in the game by, you know, just increasing the power creep or at least the speed of the power creep that they are doing across the board because I tend to enjoy card games where cards are at their highest power level, especially in a game where the depth really is not that high yet. You know, we still have decks that use vanillas. You know, we still have decks that use 2k counters, even though they have no other relevant effect than just being a discard in hand. You know, and I would just like to see them get past that point where there is more depth in the game across all of the meta decks and create more decision making and put more of an emphasis on your gameplay mechanics for the players. I just think it would overall increase the skill level that a person would have to have in order to win a major event, which is something that I'm all for. But, you know, if they were going to do a ban list, this is the card that I would have liked to see them hit because obviously. Obviously, this card is just on a higher power level and the deck in general was on a higher power interval than every other deck in the game. Now I think the important thing to note here in terms of what the impact of this card being banned is, this leader was essentially gatekeeping a lot of strategies that either got heavily punished by AoE removal because of forecast Rob Lucci being way too efficient of a removal for its cost or decks that extremely suffered from the bottom decking characters mechanic because that mechanic is not present in almost any other meta deck in the current point of the game and that really gate kept a lot of strategies you know such as your red zoro you know and going into opio 6 my favorite strategy to play so far is the vin smoke reju and i think sakazuki really held that deck back in opio 6 for Japan because that deck is focused on, you know, gathering all four of your names in order to, you know, increase the ceiling of your combos, increase the overall ceiling of your deck. And when they were able to bottom deck key characters, it really stopped you from reaching that ceiling and kind of made the deck way too fair when there's already a bunch of restrictions attached to that archetype in a whole. So for me, that's probably the reason I'm most happy that this leader is going to be banned because I felt like the ceiling of Vinsmoke Reju is way higher 
than all of the other decks in OPO6, but because of this leader, you didn't really get to see it shine in that tier one status. So I'm super excited to start brewing with Vinsmoke Raju in this meta, you know, and see if I can get some tops with that deck because that deck's low key the goo. And then lastly, some of my friends are speculating that because Sakazuki is out of the meta, that we're going to see a resurgence of Red Green Law uh, because that was one of the other decks that was extremely gate kept by that premium cheap removal. You know, considering you have to get five characters on the board in order to fulfill most of your combos. But moving on to our last card here, we've got Great Eruption being banned. Now, this is one that I just don't really understand why this needed to be banned. I think it was completely overkill because without Blue Black Sakazuki, I don't think that this card has like an extremely overpowered home. You know, maybe people would have switched to the Black Rob Lucci leader that we saw have success before the release of Sakazuki if this card wasn't banned, but I think this card being banned really hinders all of the powerful black cards because you're just decreasing the maximum ceiling of all of those cards because it costs more now to put your opponent's characters within range of a kill spell. That in itself is just such a huge hit towards black decks in general. You know, I think this card obviously is the most efficient form of cycling in the game outside of the Sakazuki leader ability and it also you know just had certain innate advantages to increasing the ceiling of your offensive black and blue cards but I don't think by any means it needed to get hit you know in fact I would rather just see all of these other decks also get you know low cost premium cycling effects as well just increase the overall power level of the game you know we just saw the new Uta starter deck has the essentially zero cost event that allows you to search every single turn and that card is right up there in power level with this card so obviously they're willing to input more of those type of cards into the game and I don't really see that this needed to be hit I guess they just really don't want anyone to be abusing four cost Rob Lucci any more than they already were I guess you know you're kind of hindering Gecko Moria slightly with this hit because Gecko Moira did have some synergies with you know the four cost Rob Lucci and I guess you're kind of lowering the incentives for Gecko Moria to actually play the four cost Rob Lucci but I don't know if that totally stops you from doing that anyway regardless this was just an unneeded hit but overall the fact Sakazuki is out of the game I'm completely fine with because it just opens up you know a bunch of different options that I can now test with and the Asian meta has not already solved for us so that all in itself is making me really motivated to be more competitive this season get you guys the goo of what's going on in OPO 6 and finally bring home a first place finish at a premier event but that's going to be all I've got for you guys today super excited to come out with some OPO 6 content coming soon let me know what your guys thoughts are on these cards did you like the bands did you not like the bands did Sakazuki being banned allow one of your favorite strategies to make its way back into that top tier meta status let me know down below in the comments as always thank you so much for watching and if it's not the goo it's got to go peace Celebrate new meta, come on! Celebrate good meta, come on! Sing with me! Celebrate new meta, come on! Fuck Sakazuki! Blue Kata was never good! Woo! Band your shit, bitch! Ooh, is that indigo?